Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit to bless and purify us. Let the flames of the Pentecost fall upon us. Purify us. Strengthen us to follow your footsteps. Let your Holy Spirit consecrate and anoint each and every one of us right now. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, Holy Spirit is the other helper promised by Jesus Christ. When I go back to the Father, I will send you another paraclete, advocate, to help you. Holy Spirit is the promise of Jesus Christ. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 20, 21, 22. We read, Jeez, Jews were in a closed room because of the fear of the Jews. The disciples were in a closed room because of the fear of the Jews. And Jesus appeared amidst them and greeted them. Peace be with you. And after saying this, he breathed upon them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The breath of the Lord, Aruha, Arah, Aruha, the spirit, the life-giving spirit of the Lord, the life-giving principle of the Lord, Aruha. We know in the Holy Scripture, we find only two times official reference regarding the breath of the Lord. One in Genesis 2.7, second in John 20.21, 20, one in Old Testament, one in New Testament. The first one indicating the glorious action of God that is the creation ceremony. Second, indicating the glorious action of Jesus, the recreation ceremony. Genesis 2, 7, God breathed on them. God made men from the dust and breathed into his nostrils. He became a living being. The act of creation. But that creation got polluted because of the negation of God's commandment by the four parents. And as a result, the whole generation got polluted. And that pollution wanted to be rectified that impurity wanted to be purified, that negativity wanted to be diffused and defeated. God the loving Father in the abundance of his mercy never, was never ready to leave the Israelites and chose a particular people, had a contract with them, had a covenant with them, and in their in 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 their line in in their line of uh, history, Isaiah seven fourteen, God promised a savior. 
A virgin shall conceive and give birth to a child and he will be called the son of the Most High. He will be called Immanuel, God with us. And the completion, the fulfillment of the history, Jesus was born of a virgin, Mother Mary. That Jesus, in and through his life, sufferings, death, resurrection. Now, the time has come to regain, recreate the whole universe, the whole generation, human generation. And after fulfilling all the promises... After fulfilling all the requirements, after paying the price for the sinfulness of humanity, now he is breathing on the disciples and telling them, receive the Holy Spirit. According to Paul, Jesus became the life-giving spirit. The first Adam, the first Adam cost the destruction of God's grace, but the second Adam became a life-giving spirit. Yes, Jesus became a life-giving spirit. More than 2,000 years are over. Probably there can come up a question, what is my relationship with in this incident that occurred 2,000 years back? Let us be clear in our perception. Let us be clear in our conviction. Let us be clear in our faith. We have accepted the same Holy Spirit at the moment when we received the Holy Sacrament of Baptism. Even today and even now, we are growing up in that Holy Spirit. Even today, even now, we are moving on, moving on, living on the power and energy of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is active within us. Brothers and sisters in Jesus, we are embodiments of God's Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 onwards. Don't you know that you are the temples of the living, living God? Again, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 onwards. Don't you know that you are the temples of the living God, which you have received from God, and therefore you do not have a right over your own self? Glorify God in your bodies. How glorious are our lives. Filled with the power of God, grace of God, spirit of God. Remember brothers and sisters in Jesus, we need to understand the different kinds of God's presence with us. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. The spirit of God was moving over the waters. The Spirit of God was moving over the waters. The spiritual presence of God in the universe. And that spiritual presence became, becomes human, physical presence in the year BCE 6 and comes to an end in the year AD 29. According to the fulfillment, in accordance with the fulfillment of the promises, in accordance with the promises, Jesus was born in the year BCE 6, BCE 5, and died in the year AD 29. The physical presence of God with us. Spiritual presence of God. Now physical presence of God. 
What John said is absolutely right. John 1.14 The word of God made flesh dwelt amongst us. The physical presence of God. And again, after the death, John 20.14 Mary was standing close by the tomb of Jesus but she could not recognize who he was. She was considering him as the gardener and asked him, where did you put the body of Jesus? Tell me, I will go and take it with me. Then Jesus replied, Mary. When the voice of the Lord came, when the voice of the Lord came, Mary recognized. She replied, Rabuni, O oh my master. Why couldn't she recognize Jesus? It gives an indication to the presence of Jesus with us in that form. Jesus was in the transformed presence. With resurrection, in resurrection, Jesus became transformed, the transformed body. The spiritual presence of God with us, physical presence of God with us, now transformed presence of God with us. Now again, Acts chapter 4, 2. Another presence of God. When the Spirit of God became active, when the Spirit of God started revealing, performing actions, miracles, miraculous interventions to substantiate the preaching of the disciples. The Word of God says, He was going on adding, He was going on adding the number of saved people, people who attained the salvation. As the first church came up, the communion came up, the mystical presence of Jesus, the mystical body, spiritual presence of God with us, physical presence of God with us, transformed presence of God with us, now mystical presence of God with us. Each parish, each family, each community is a mystical presence of Jesus himself. Even at the time, even at a time when you, even at a time you negate, you reject, you cannot reject the reality. Your family is the mystical presence of God. Your life is the mystical revelation. Again, John 6, 46 onwards, the sacramental presence of God. The sacramental presence of God, the body and blood, the sacramental expressions, the sacramental presence of God with us in the church, in the mystical body. In and through each sacrament, the living God is sharing his graces, his graces to each and every one of us in accordance the need. Spiritual presence of God with us, physical presence of God with us, transformed presence of God with us, mystical presence of God with us, sacramental presence of God with us. Jesus, after the resurrection now, Jesus who is in the transformed body, is giving up himself giving himself up into the hearts and minds of the disciples so that they may go out and preach and proclaim the power, strength, anointing and the glory, the grace of God's message of love and mercy and salvation. And today, and today, we, even after thousands and thousands of years, even today, the living Jesus is sharing his spirit with each and every one of us. And that's why St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was brutally murdered 
by King Trajan in the year 110 wrote three terms to refer a faithful man, a believer. Of course, he was writing a letter to his people in Antioch. It was a time Antiochian church was severely under the persecution by King Trajan. And he wrote three terms to qualify them, to call them. My dear children, you are Theophoroi. My dear children, you are Christophoroi. My dear children, you are Hagiophoroi. You are Naophoroi. Four words he used. The first one, Theophoroi, Theos, God bearer. Christophoroi, Christ bearer. Hagiophoroi, spirit bearer. Naophoroi, temple bearer. You are bearing the loving God the Father. You are bearing Jesus. You are bearing the Holy Spirit. And you are bearing the temple of God within you. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, even today, the same is applicable to me and you. Each one who accepted Jesus is the temple of the living God. Each one of us. He is not someone to be sold out in the market. He is not someone to be misused. He is not someone to be abused. He is not someone to be ridiculed. He is not someone to be underestimated. He is not someone to be negated. He is not someone to be abused. The bond of relationship between a Christian and another Christian is that they are bound by the bond of Spirit, Holy Spirit. We are bound by the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the elderly scholars used to say, a famous principle. If you want to be a real Catholic, if you want to be a real believer, you must be able to see the face of God when you close your eyes. And you must be able to see the face of Jesus in the face of all around you when you open your eyes. Yes. If you want to be a real Catholic, if you want to be a real follower of Jesus, you must be able to see the face of Jesus when you close your eyes. See the face of Jesus in your heart. And when you open your eyes, you must be able to see the face of Jesus in the face of others who are around you. How beautiful. How beautiful it is. Dear brothers and sisters, whoever, whatever may be the conditions of our lives, equally, equally we are called to be the temples of the living God where the Spirit of the God, Spirit of the Lord is always alive. Spirit of God is alive within me. And with you, within you, and in your parish, in your church. What does it mean? It implies, it, it, it includes two implications, my dear brothers and sisters. The need and the pain of the other one must be felt as the same need and pain of my own self. I must be able enough to see the need of others as my need. The pain of others as my pain. I felt pain when my brothers and sisters were being brutally crucified, brutally killed in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in different parts of India. 
I was feeling pain when my brothers and my parents and my sisters were, were and are being brutally killed and destroyed in the Middle East. Why? Because we are bound by the power of the Holy Spirit. But our God is so powerful, even from the blood of the martyrs, he can produce thousands and thousands of living witnesses to his glory. Kantamal is giving his fruits, its fruits, the same way Middle East will give its fruits to the glory of the Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit is alive within me and with you. We have a responsibility. I told you the two implications are there. One, I must, I must realize the need of the other one as my own need. I must see the pain of the other as my own pain. And the second principle, the second thing, the second implication. I must be ready to give up myself for the other one. I must be ready to make a total command and commitment to the other one. My body, my talents, my wealth, my efficiencies, my, my capacities, my desires, my plans, aspirations, everything must be transformed into, into, in, into such a situations of service to the other people who are in need of it. We are called to be the embodiments of God's spirit here on earth. John 10 30 Jesus said Philip don't you see the father one who looks at me sees the father because I myself and my father we are one and today each one of us is invited by the Lord to say that you are in your your Lord one you are one with Jesus I am one with Jesus and that is the way we have to live the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the way, that is the means how we need to live the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the means, this is the means to glorify God in our lives. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fall upon us. Change our hearts, Lord. Burn off every iniquities and sinfulness. Enlighten our hearts, minds. Fill us with your power. Anoint us. Let the flames of your Pentecost fall upon us right now. Amen.